<clears throat> Hello, back episode number 34 of the TW Trade Away Challenge run. This is the week 3 July Monday edition of My Night Raw, as the build to Great Balls of Fire continues. Uh, and if ever do, let's jump straight into the show. I won't be great. We start the show with Selena Vega, Andrade, Gaza, and Escobar coming out. Selena says that we saw a glimpse into the future last week when Andrade pinned Drew McIntyre in the main event of Raw, and that the WWE Universe need to say goodbye to Drew's title reign, because that will happen again at Great Balls of Fire. And then Angel Gaza sort of steps in, he's like, and if it doesn't, I will also be there to take the title. And then Selena looks at him, he's like, bitch, you know we said that Andrade was winning. And then Drew comes out himself. He says he has to admit he thinks Swerve is one hell of a competitor, but last week he really let him down. But he's not one to make excuses. He'll just make up for it this week. He gets Gaza and Andrade at Great Balls of Fire, but he wants Escobar, and he wants him tonight. If Drew wins, he's banned from ringside, or banned from interfering in the match at Great Balls of Fire. And then he takes the mic and says, you're on. So that will be the main event. Drew McIntyre finally getting his hands one-on-one -on -one in a wrestling match with Santos Escobar. Opening match gets a 65, Alistair Black defeats Jinder Mahal with a black mass in 1048, 70 for Alistair, 49 for Jinder. After the match, Alistair Black is sitting down in his spooky dark lighting. And from out of the dark comes Damian Priest, who beats him up and lays him out with a reckoning, and then fires his archer. As the music starts and the Titantron says Damien Priest, because that looks cool. Speaking of the Church of Rollins, Seth Rollins is happy with the church. He says he liked that the fire that Candice and Ruby showed when they beat up Liv Morgan last week. And of course, Johnny winning in his debut made him happy. So he turns to Murphy. He says that if he wants to be the next it'll be champion, he needs to follow suit against Montez Ford here tonight. So we'll be obviously, obviously after Angelo Dawkins fought Gargano last week. Be Murphy and Montez Ford this week. I think that is the semi main, so it's not up next, it is later on. I said click. Up next is this random eight man tag, like we're AEW Dynamite over here. Um, Path of the Dragon and the Viking Raiders defeat the Peak of Zeke and the Singh Brothers. Um, Eric pins Samir Singh. 49 for each Viking, 51 for Carrillo, 50 for Tazawa, 42 for Nice, 35 for Moss, 36 for Sunil, 32 for Samir. <laughs> Backstage segment, R-Truth is meeting up with his good friend Road Dog, and they recite, oh, but, I mean, yes, he's, he says, hey, we've gone, come a lot from the K-Quick days, how are you doing now, bro? And he's like, oh, I'm the... 43 time 24 7 7 11 universal european television champion and road dog says hey that's a great great accolade you've got there truth you know that's one title i've never won i was a hardcore champion back in the day but i've never held that 24 7 title and our truth's like um okay and then a referee comes up and road dog rolls up our truth and takes the belt off him and he's like you're damn right and he does his little road dog jiggle as he takes the title away <laughs> 27, just to get more women on the show to fill time. Sugar Rush get a win over Nia and Natty. Candy Floss pins Natalia. 31 for Nia, 35 for Natalia. 31 for Candy Floss, 34 for Zaya. So they're finally on par with these two shitters, uh, the young British girls. And yeah, they get a win here on Raw. First time I think we've seen them since Vengeance. And just to get them a bounce back win, they got beat by the Kabuki Warriors on pay-per-view. Ricochet and Cedric then cut a promo. He says Ricochet's big win should put them next in line for the tag title shot, of course, referring to him beating MVP last week. Then Ozzy might walk into frame. Well, it says walk into frame. It's actually be in the ring. So they come out and they tell him that they need to watch their mouths as Big Bronson Reed can shut them at any time. But then here's some, some, someone clearing his throat from off screen. He's like, <clears throat> that's the Connell TW special. And it's MVP. MVP says Apollo and Shelton made them look like fools after Ricochet's fluke win last week. 
and that VIP nation is long overdue for some championship gold. MVP turns to Wazzy Martin and says that if Bronson Reed has a problem with what he is saying, he could take it up with the almighty Bobby Lashley. And that would lead to a tag title match, not a tag title match, just a tag team match. Ricochet and Cedric against Apollo and Shelton. Gets a 57. Ends in chaos when Aussie might get involved and beat both teams up, causing a double DQ. And apparently there's no text for this. So basically what it is, is um, Brendan Vink, Shane Fawn, and Bronson Reed are beating up Cedric, Ricochet, Apollo, and Shelton. And then Big Bobby Lashley would come into the ring. Him and Bronson Reed would have a big boy stare down. One thick boy, one thick bum. Lashley would take him out of a spear. And then he would use German suplexes to take out Brendan Vink and Shane Thorne. And he'd stand there, he'd help MVP and chart onto their feet. And he'd do Brock Lesnar's little jiggle on the spot. As he hands... He offers a hand to help Apollo and Shelton to their feet. As VIP Nation stand tall... And Lashley firing shots at his opponent at Great Balls of Fire. That being Brock Lesnar. <laughs> Backstage segment. Seth Rollins is with Akam. It's Charlie should be here as well. She's off screen. She says, what happened with you and Rey Mysterio last week? Seth said it was nothing personal against Rey. Rey chose... Rey was the, just the person that was booked in the match against Akam. And, he'd be, and he needed to be taught a lesson because Akam lost that match. And Akam is normally the harbinger of justice here in the church. He's only the one who puts people back in their place if they disappoint the Messiah. So he ordered Akam, of course, to go and beat Rey Mysterio down because he wasn't happy with him losing. And then he stomped him for good measure. It's nothing personal against Rey. It's just continuing to build to the greater good here on Monday Night Raw. Hmm. Okay, I definitely clicked that. <laughs> anyway, Bianca Belair gets a win over Ashley Vox, who is just here for one night. Bianca gets a 40, Ashley a 31. Not much else to it, just to get her a win on the show to fill time again, because we have got three hours of this. Iconics then brag backstage about beating the Kabuki Warriors last week. Asuka interrupts and she shouts at them in Japanese, and then she needs to help Kyrie find her fire. But since Kyrie's not here this week, ignore the fact that she's on screen. She'll take on one of them in a singles match right now. That one being Billy Kay. It doesn't end well for Billy. She gets beaten by an Asuka lock. Asuka gets a 71. 44 for Billy. Charlie then hosts a split screen sit down interview between Shayna Baszler and Charlotte Flair ahead of their match at Great Balls of Fire. Charlotte says that Shayna is way in over her head. NXT is one thing, but facing the Queen is another. She says Shayna held the NXT women's title for over 400 days. Congratulations, we know who else did that? Asuka. And Asuka learnt the hard way that the Queen is a cut above the rest. She held the title for as long as Shayna did, but when she met the Queen on the main roster, at WrestleMania on the grandest stage of them all, she learnt what they all learn, and that is that they all bow down, woo. Shayna laughs at this, she says Charlotte is really starting to believe her own bullshit. The system have told her that she's the greatest women's wrestler of all time, and she believes that. She thinks the pomp and circumstances truly make her the queen. But being the queen is holding this title and defending this title. You can keep your flashy robes, you can keep your pyro and your flashing lights. But a great balls of fire. Shayna is keeping the Raw Women's Championship. Candice and Liv have a match after their altercation last week. Gets a 59, which is really good for a match between these two. Candice beats Liv in 10 minutes after Ruby helps her. Lana approaches Titus O'Neil. Lana tells him that he's a great man and that he should do something about the evil men who walk around here uppercutting women. Of course, I found to O'Neill Lorcan. Titus says that whoever did that should be made to pay. And then we hear outing from shouting from off screen. O'Neill walks into frame. He's like, I'm here on my night raw and I'll kick your ass and win the US title at the Great Balls of Fire pay per view. Throw him up. <laughs> so he kind of accepts Titus's challenge in a match that scores a 49. O'Neill defeats Titus. In six minutes with a flying blockbuster. He gets a 48, Titus gets a 39. After the match, the new friendly rival of Oni Lorcan comes out on stage, that being Kevin Owens, the US champion. And he applauds Oni for what he showed here tonight, beating up such an established, great competitor like Titus O'Neill. 
Here's Murphy versus Montez Ford. Gets a 65. Montez Ford defeats Murphy in 1336 with a frog splash. Murphy gets a 69. Ford gets a 70. Oh, 70? 50. Fucking hell. Ford was getting a 70. He'd not be in a tag team. That's for damn sure. Well, that's not even true, but like not with Dawkins while Dawkins is scoring shit. Murphy is disheveled after his loss to Buddy for Montez Ford. And Seth Rollins comes out with Gargano and Akam. He's clearly not happy with his disciple here tonight. He gets in his face. And then he goes to tease that Akam is going to drop him a powerbomb. Seth picks up his briefcase, sort of looks at it, and then twats Montez Ford with it. And then orders Murphy, Gargano, and Akam to beat up the Street Profits. And then Murphy hugs Seth, and they all pledge together with their hands on their, over their hearts and their hands over the Bible as a church, have duped the Street Profits here tonight. 67 for the main event. McIntyre defeats Santos Escobar in 13-12 for Claymore. 81 for Drew, 41 for Escobar. And with that defeat, that now means he's banned from coming out during the Triple Threat match at Great Balls of Fire. But the show's not over. Andrade, and as, soon as, the, as soon as the free count rings and the bell rings... Andrade and Gaza are in there and they pounce on Drew like he just hear like the start of his song for about a second or it gets cut off because he's already been attacked. Drew fights them off and lays out Drew. Oh, that's supposed to be Andrade. <laughs> so Drew fights off and lays out Andrade with a Glasgow kiss before getting dropped with a ring clipper. Gaza picks up the WWE title. He sort of looks at it and then Selena's like gets in his face and shouts at him. He's like, no, you'll, you'll let Andrade pose with his title. And then Gaza's like, she's getting it. He's taking the abuse of Selena and he sort of looks around, tied on his hand. He looks at it. He looks around at the crowd and they're all shouting, no, 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 don't, don't do it. Gaza shakes his head. He hands Andrade the title and he sort of drops off as Andrade holds the title in the air to end the show. Tranquilo. 72. Lose pop. Because I've not really been booking big main events and I think that's really what's damaging these shows. And of course, what matters more than that is what you thought of the show, so do let me know what you thought in the comments below. And I'll see you next time for SmackDown. See you then.